Welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Recently, I've been doing a lot of experimentation with various weather satellites. Now, this is all well and good when I'm at home and I've got access to my various satellite dishes and antennas and whatnot. But if you're like me, you've probably wondered, what if I want to pick up some live weather satellite data, but I'm out on the road, I'm out on vacation, and all I have in my pocket is my cell phone, some random wire bits, some duct tape, maybe some foil tape, a takeout container, an umbrella, an RTL SDR, a sawbird filter, USB cable, OTG adapter, and some random antenna cables. You know, all the regular stuff that any of us carry around in our pockets on a daily basis. I can't fit the cat in my pocket, unfortunately. She has to stay at home. Okay, so unreasonable scenario aside, what I really want to know here is, can I make a basic satellite ground station with just this stuff? Just random junk that I had around the house, plus a phone and my existing RTL SDR and Sawbird filter. First off, let's take a look at this umbrella. And yes, yes, I know you're not supposed to open these inside. Seven years bad luck and all that. There we go. I've just uh, cursed myself. So this is not exactly a parabolic shape, but it's pretty close and I bet it'll reflect some stuff. It's actually a little bit bigger than some of the other satellite dishes I've been using lately. And we've got a bunch of this foil tape. This is actually the closest to real duct tape because it's for uh, HVAC repair. And this is a reflective metal. It seems to reflect uh, radio frequencies as well as some light. I've used this before for satellite projects. So let's just coat this sucker in foil tape and see what it does. Well, there we go. Stylish and reflective. And hey, if it doesn't work for picking up satellites or cooking hot dogs, maybe we can use it to block CIA mind control. Now, you might be asking, does this fold up again? I don't know, and I don't want to try right now because I think that'll ruin the tinfoil. So uh, we're going to try this first as an antenna, and then maybe we'll see if we can fold it up and redeploy it later. Okay, next we'll want a feed or the actual receiving element to the antenna. So we're going to take our disposable pie pan here and my little sawbird plus goes filter and this is what um, filters and amplifies l-band signals which is what we're trying to look for here next we want to make a helical feed out of our wire this is going to be kind of the hardest part to get any precision out of it in the field all right, we've got that coil close to where I want it, so it's pretty springy. I'm just going to duct tape it to some random sticks I found in the woods to make this a little stiffer. All right, so there's our honestly pretty terrible helical feed attached to our pie pan. Yeah, I don't expect much from this right off the bat. Now, a nice feature of this umbrella, we can make the handle shorter or longer without actually collapsing the entire thing. So I can use that to maybe fine tune the focal point. All right, now that we have this absolute crime against antenna theory, let's move on to the receiver unit, the software. I found an APK for SDR++. It's kind of a pre-release version, so it's got some bugs, but we're gonna give that a shot. We'll be connecting our SDR unit with this little uh, USB-C to regular old USB adapter. Yeah, it doesn't look silly at all. Now, I also need to find a driver file so I can use the little RTL SDR thing here. So let's hook my phone up to my umbrella and try to download some satellite data. I don't know if anyone's ever said that sentence before. I am actually somehow getting an HRPT signal here. All right, we are actually getting some weather satellite data with an umbrella. It looks like this whole project is working perfectly with no problems. Or that's how this edit makes it look. People sometimes ask how I can do all this stuff so well on the first try, and really, I don't. I'm a trial and error kind of guy, and a project like this involves a lot of error before it goes as well as what you're seeing here. It's actually taken me all week, multiple tries, multiple satellites before I've gotten pictures this pretty. Let's see what some of that process looks like. I was going to do a time lapse of this entire process, but it took way longer than I thought. It was way harder to get the tape to behave, and I needed almost three rolls of tape. So it didn't go quite the way I expected, but we do have our tinfoil umbrella now. I've got this kind of weird phone that a viewer sent me. Uh, thank you to Eric Hahn. This thing is a Poco 
M3 and it runs some sort of weird communist Chinese Android. It doesn't run stock Android. So I am terrified about putting any personal information in this thing. I am actually hesitant to give it to my Wi-Fi password. Okay, so even with the driver installed, STR++ keeps crashing. Well, so far I've tried three different apps and none of them can actually access the SDR. The little virus scanner here recommends that we install more communist spyware on our phone. We've given up on that Poco phone for now and gone back to my regular phone. I'll have to find some other use for that thing. All right, well, I'd love to say this is working great, no problems, but it really isn't. I still cannot get SDR++ to run with that driver. Um, the free SDR programs I've got won't do basic stuff like Bias T or are just a demo mode, so still having trouble with this thing. Um, who knew the phone installation would be the hardest part of making a DIY antenna like this? Now, one downside of the umbrella is there's no handle on the back of it, so it's really hard to hold an aim. Okay. Yeah, it is way too windy for this. Um, this thing is this thing weighs nothing, so it's just getting tossed around by the wind. Well, it's a little wet outside for this pass, so I've got to leave the camera in the garage and film myself out here. If only I had some sort of umbrella for this weather. All right. Well, I just stood here for ten minutes like an idiot, holding that thing over my head, and didn't have the bias T turned on, so I wasted that entire pass. Okay, and my camera keeps shutting off too. It keeps complaining about the write speed on the card, so it might be time to throw out these SD cards and get new ones. I don't know if the last couple minutes even recorded. Okay, I tried NOAA 19 again just now, and I definitely got some data, although it's mostly pixel data. So obviously this whole concept is pretty bad, and this entire video should probably just either be deleted or go into the goofs, screw-ups, abandon videos folder and show up in a future blooper compilation. However, in an effort to get something out of this video, we've altered the dish slightly, we've put a linear antenna feed on here, and we've stuck it on our old tripod so we can aim our umbrella antenna. We're going to try the GOES geostationary satellite one more time. Now, obviously, because I'm a complete idiot, I'm still doing this in windy conditions, and my little umbrella dish is still wiggling around a lot. I've got it hiding up next to the house to try to minimize that, but we're still going to get some wiggle. All right, so we are getting a signal from GOES 16, and it's not a terrible signal. I've honestly seen a worse signal than that on other dishes and still gotten a few data packets, so we're going to go ahead and give this a try. Our SDR++ won't record for more than about five minutes before crashing, so we're only going to get a little bit of data from this. All right, we're trying that recording through sat dump, and so far it seems pretty happy with it. It says it's synced. And look at that, it's actually building a disk image. We're getting some data from this umbrella thing. We've got our full disk images from GOES East, and we've got some stuff transmitted over from some of the other GOES satellites. We've got our emergency weather messages, we've got our alerts, we've got our mesoscale stuff zoomed in on hurricanes and whatnot. All the usual GOES satellite data. So yeah, I think that's pretty cool. After my success with the geostationary satellites, I tried a few low orbit passes again. I did use the same linear antenna that I used for GOES. Even though it gets only about half the gain of a real helical antenna, it worked way better than that helical I tried to make just on the fly. And I was also able to get both STR++ and Stellarium apps to behave on my phone, so I could use those in split screen mode aim at the satellite while watching the signal strength. That's how I was able to get some of these images from various L-band satellite transmissions. And again, all of these images were received with the umbrella covered in foil tape with the equipment I've shown here. Now, eventually I had to give up because the thing started falling apart. The foil doesn't really want to stick to the umbrella long term, so this is not a permanent satellite dish, but I'm really pleased with how well it worked just for being thrown together out of junk. All right, well, against all odds, the umbrella satellite antenna worked. I was able to get satellite data, and in fact, this thing worked better than the last time I tried the GOES satellite with tinfoil when I extended an old DirecTV dish. Now, this is definitely cheap. Um, aside from the Sawbird, which is about $45, and the RTL SDR, which is about $30, this is an $8 umbrella on Amazon. It's about $8 worth of foil tape. This little antenna here was about $12 also on Amazon. I'll throw links to all that stuff down in the description. So yeah, the entire antenna here, the umbrella, the foil, and the feed in the middle cost less than $30. 
Compare that to the Wi-Fi grid antenna you can get for the GOES satellites on Amazon that's $100 just by itself and it's almost $200 for the entire package of that grid antenna and the SDR hardware. This thing with the antenna with the SDR hardware about $100 altogether. So as a proof of concept I'd say the umbrella satellite dish works. Is it cheap? Yes. Is it effective? Yeah, maybe. Like I said, it blows around in the wind, it falls apart in the rain. I still haven't tried to actually fold this up yet. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna say that's a no. This does not want to fold up at all. And I can already tell if I force it, everything's just gonna rip. So once you have your umbrella covered in foil, it's an umbrella covered in foil. You're not gonna get it down into a portable package anymore. There's no way I'm gonna be able to transport this. And if I put this thing in my luggage, the TSA is gonna just tear me apart. But theoretically, if I had time on a road trip and I had an umbrella and some foil tape, I could assemble this just about anywhere. I think we're gonna wrap this video up for now. I might try some other stuff with this silly antenna, but I have so many other antennas sitting around in the garage here that I've got plenty of other stuff to keep myself occupied. And this was just a silly side quest. So we may or may not come back to this. Stay tuned to see what else I do with other antenna nonsense, other satellite nonsense, and then all my other usual projects. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.